In the near future, prisons are incredibly overcrowded, but soon a TV channel comes up with a solution by designing a reality show called Jurassic Games. 10 death row convicts are connected to a very realistic virtual reality program and if they die there, they die in real life too. The convicts must fight each other and also go against vicious dinosaurs in many different scenarios, the last person standing will win their freedom. One of these convicts is Anthony, who has been found guilty of the murder of his wife. He swears he's innocent and most people believed him because the trial had been very suspicious, so his case became famous on the news. Because he was sent to jail, his teenage kids have no parents left, so Anthony doesn't hesitate to accept the invitation to the games, hoping to reunite with his family soon. When the games begin, the 10 convicts are connected to the simulation in the studio with the game masters. The players wake up outside a huge forest and are greeted by the host, who is wearing a special mask for the occasion. He reminds everyone that the collars on their necks will kill them if they break the rules and any pain they feel here it'll be felt by the real bodies too, so they'll know the pain they cause to their victims. Their first objective is to reach a temporary safe zone that is hiding a few miles beyond the tree line, and their collars will alert them when they arrive. Red means too far away, yellow means getting closer, and green means they've completed the challenge. Whoever doesn't reach the safe zone in an hour will die, and in the real world the technicians will give them lethal injections as assigned by the state. Killing each other is also fine by the rules. As the host disappears, a T-Rex shows up and immediately eats a convict while the others run away. The host returns to the studio and the director Savannah confirmed this cast has brought more viewers than ever before. The dead player's body is taken away while families all over the country tune in to watch the violence that is now starting. In the game, Billy tries to attack Albert, who pretends to be a weak man and begs mercy. However as soon as Billy turns around, Albert jumps on him to bite him because he's a cannibal. Billy manages to push him off and runs away bleeding. Back to the host, he explains the stages of the game to the audience, the first one is the woods, the second one will be a maze, the third one will be a minefield, and the fourth one will be a surprise to keep the public intrigued. All four stages have deadly dinosaurs in them. Then the screen begins showing the profiles of the convicts, describing the crimes they've committed while Savannah checks on the technicians to be sure security is doing well because they often have hackers attempting to breach their firewalls. Afterward the host also says goodbye to the first victim while the camera centers on a grieving man before showing an instant replay of the death. The host tells the audience not to feel bad for the dead convict because he was a school bomber, and even plays security footage of his crimes. Back in the game, Billy comes across Joy and corners her against a tree to grab her by the neck. Before he can kill her, Anthony shows up and shoves Billy away, triggering a fight. Billy is bigger and stronger so he easily overpowers Anthony, who suddenly throws dirt at Billy's eyes to distract him and knock him down with a rock. Then Joy grabs another rock and finishes Billy off, which makes Anthony uncomfortable. Joy calls him a coward and says she's here to kill everyone but they end up leaving together anyway. After they're gone, two small dinosaurs show up to fight over Billy's body. Meanwhile in the real world, lots of protesters are trying to get the game shut down, but they're ignored. Reporter Laura visits Anthony's kids for an interview and the daughter sends Anthony a message, telling him to survive. However the son immediately points out his father is innocent and demands the games to be stopped. When Laura leaves with her guard, they have to avoid a bunch of protesters who try to block their way. As more dinosaurs appear in the woods, Savannah scolds her technicians for not spawning the creatures closer to the players since the audience is starting to get bored. Anthony continues to walk with Joy, who says she believes Anthony is innocent before attacking him. She beats him up before grabbing some rope and hanging him on the rock, telling him she'll see him later before she leaves. While Anthony struggles against the rope, the host rolls a video introducing Joy to the audience. She's a ruthless psychopath and the youngest player to join the games ever. Laura had an interview with her before the games, but Joy was rude and refused to answer any questions. She tried to trick Laura into coming closer to attack her, but the guards immediately punished her. Anthony's kids think his father is about to die when suddenly the rope comes loose and it's revealed Ren has rescued him. He wants to make an alliance because it's impossible to survive alone and Anthony agrees to team up with him, so they run away as they hear the dinosaurs approaching. In the meantime Laura is editing a video about Ren in which he accepts his sentence and tells people to rebel against the system. Savannah reminds her not to use that because they don't want to cause an uprising and Laura uses the chance to complain about the interview with Anthony's children because they were too young. However Savannah tells her that if she doesn't like her assignments, she can quit. In the game, the wasp is climbing down some rocks and accidentally hurts his leg. When he makes it to the ground, he's cornered by the Mason brothers, who make fun of his nickname and try to attack him. The wasp pushes them away and offers a deal, if they help him win, he'll pay for their sick mother's expensive treatment. At that moment the dinosaurs show up, but because the trio is having an interesting moment, the host orders the technician to make the dinosaurs disappear to build up more tension. Then the brothers start arguing because the younger one doesn't believe the wasp, but the older one does. In the end, the older mason accepts the wasp's deal and stops his brother from hurting him, so the younger mason has no choice but to join the team as well. In the studio, the host tells the audience that the mason brothers don't know their mother died yesterday. Back to Anthony, 
he and Ren manage to run fast enough to avoid the dinosaurs and make it to the safe zone. Meanwhile Stephanie is cornered by Albert, but before he can attack the safe zone activates for them as well. Soon all the remaining 8 players cross a digital door that appears in front of them and enter a mysterious room, where they want to fight again. However the collars knock them out so the show can play an ad instead. It turns out they've made action figures of all the convicts and now sell them to the kids. Afterward, the players wake up in the room and find themselves chained to a set of screens while the host shows up to start the next stage. They must solve the maze on the screens to escape from the chains, and the first one to do it will be rewarded with a weapon. After the host leaves, the players immediately begin working on the maze and the first one to finish is Albert, who immediately grabs the weapon and shoots the wasp in the leg. Ren tries to calm him down and Albert shoots at him too, but Ren dodges just in time. At that moment, Anthony finishes the maze as well and once the chain is gone, he knocks down Albert and takes the weapon, but he refuses to kill. Suddenly a few dinosaurs appear in the room, so everyone hurries to end the digital puzzle and run through a door to enter the real maze. Ren can't finish his, so Anthony shoots the chain to free him and they hurry into the maze together. It's dark and foggy inside, so soon Ren and Anthony accidentally split. As all the players get lost in the countless corridors, Ren accidentally returns to the main room, where he's surrounded by the dinosaurs. Using the chain, Ren shows off his martial art moves and manages to hit the beasts a couple of times, but they are too strong to be knocked down and they soon push him to the ground to eat him. Afterward, the dinosaurs return to the maze. One of them almost finds a hiding Stephanie, but Anthony shoots the beast first. The sound of the shot gets the attention of the other dinosaurs, who immediately begin chasing after them. Anthony and Stephanie begin to run and bump into the others, so they move together until they're stuck at a dead end. At that moment Stephanie notices a grate, so Anthony shoots it open and they escape through there. Anthony moves last and keeps on killing dinosaurs on his way out. When the players come out to a desert area, Albert jumps on Anthony to knock him down and steal the weapon. However it's run out of ammunition and Albert can't shoot, so Anthony pushes him away. At that moment the host arrives and congratulates the remaining 7 players. Since Stephanie was the first one to exit the maze, the host gives her a reward, it's a small digital map that will take her to a crate with game-changing supplies. After the host disappears, a fight begins over the map and ends up in the hands of the Masons, so the rest of the group begins following them. Meanwhile Laura is showing the story of Stephanie's crimes, she killed 16 men on a stream, and at first everyone thought it was an act, but they turned out to be real deaths. Then Savannah appears on a newscast for an interview, during which the reporter questions the morality of the show. Savannah points out all these convicts were going to die on death row anyway and they have permission from the government, so she doesn't see the issue. The reporter also asks about an organization called the Cavemen that wants to disrupt the season finale, but Savannah is confident in her security. After the interview ends, Savannah says she wishes there was no winner because all these disgusting criminals deserve to die. Back in the game, the group keeps walking while avoiding some huge but peaceful dinosaurs. Anthony gets to chat with Stephanie, who doesn't think Anthony is guilty either. The Mason brothers are arguing over who should carry the map and are too distracted to notice a huge carnivorous plant capturing the wasp with its poisonous leaves. When they hear the screaming, one of the brothers punches the plant and makes it drop the wasp, who is severely hurt. Furious over having been ignored, the wasp confesses he was never going to help the brothers and insults their mother, so the older Mason kills him. Afterward the older Mason announces he wants to quit the game, but his brother quickly stops him because he wants to do this together. Stephanie uses this chance to get back the map. While pterodactyls start flying above them, the remaining six players keep going until they're blocked by an invisible barrier. Suddenly the host shows up and announces the next stage. Nearby, there is a box with a knife and ammo for the weapon. The goal is to cross the area to reach the box, however there's a catch. At that moment a dinosaur shows up only to suddenly explode, revealing this area is a minefield. Luckily the map can guide them safely through it. As Stephanie starts guiding the group, the older Mason attacks Anthony and announces he doesn't want to play anymore. Anthony manages to punch him and shove him away before joining the group, and at that moment, the barrier closes, leaving the older Mason behind. Now he's out of the game, his collar activates and makes his head explode. The group keeps moving and does their best to avoid the pterodactyls that are now coming for them. Most of them get away, but the youngest Mason is caught and the pterodactyl drops him on top of mine, killing him. The remaining four players make it to the box and Stephanie manages to grab both the knife and the ammo, so now she has the upper hand. Moments later, Anthony, Stephanie, and Albert are together in the woods and are worried because they can't see Joy. Anthony will go looking for her just in case, but Stephanie refuses to give him the ammo. When Anthony finds Joy, he tells the story of what happened to his wife, after breaking down the door, a person killed her in the middle of the night with a knife from his kitchen. The investigators said Anthony did it and he broke the door on purpose to make it look like a home invasion. Then he mentions that Joy is barely older than his daughter, calling her just a kid. Joy doesn't care and says she'll take Anthony to the final two so she can kill him. At that moment they hear screaming and rush back to discover Albert biting Stephanie. Anthony immediately jumps on him and starts fighting him, so Albert retaliates by stabbing him with a piece of wood. 
Then Albert steals the ammo and the weapon to open fire on the other three, who immediately begin running away. Anthony manages to climb some rocks, leaving blood behind on purpose before hiding. Albert follows the blood and is ambushed by Anthony, who quickly attacks Albert and makes him drop the weapon. The men begin fighting again and struggle to get the weapon, which ends up falling down the rocks. Albert decides to go after it, but after he recovers the weapon, he suddenly finds himself surrounded by horrible bugs that cover his body and eat his flesh, only leaving a skeleton behind. In the studio, the host talks to a woman who is crying because her husband had been killed by Albert, and seeing him die brings her closure. However, as soon as the camera turns away, it's revealed she's just a paid actor. Meanwhile, Laura meets with her guard and touches her hidden weapon, revealing she's ready. Back in the game, Anthony and Stephanie have a hard time moving because of their injuries. Anthony removes the piece of wood, but that only makes his bleeding worse. He refuses to give up though, and he tells his kids that he'll be going home. At the same time, Joy is found by a saber-toothed tiger, but as it jumps, she moves out of the way and the tiger falls down a hole in a rocky formation. Minutes later, Joy finds Stephanie, who is too weak to use her knife. Joy kicks her and sends her down the hole, where the saber-toothed tiger immediately feeds on her. Back in the studio, Savannah is getting pressured by the press to mention Anthony's possible innocence, so the host has no choice but to talk about it on camera. He reminds the public that Anthony was found guilty and he has no power to be a judge, so it's up to the game to decide who lives and who dies. Suddenly one of the technicians finds an encrypted message from inside the studio, which finally starts worrying Savannah. They track the message and discover it came from Laura's computer, so they go to confront her. It turns out she's part of the caveman group and plans to kill the host tonight. She proceeds to kill Savannah while her guard kills Savannah's companion, managing to save the plan for now. At that moment, doors open for Anthony and Joy and they're transported to a desert, only for their collars to knock them out. When they wake up, they discover they're chained to the ground and the host is there too. He tells Anthony that he's the audience's favorite and plays his kid's message for him before explaining the final stage. A circle of light appears around them and the first one to cross it will win. In order to do so they'll need to open the padlocks using the keys that are currently buried in the sand. After the host leaves, Anthony immediately begins looking for the key, but Joy starts beating him up while she confesses a secret. She accepted to be in the games because she wanted to meet him and finish what she started, meaning she was the one who killed his wife. At first Anthony doesn't want to fight, but when he hears the truth, he furiously attacks back, ready to kill her. The host doesn't want the game to end so soon and makes the technician send a T-Rex after the players. The duo drops their fight for now and desperately begins looking for the keys while dodging the dinosaur's attacks. Joy finds her key first and unlocks the chain before she starts running to escape, but the host blocks her way by sending two more T-Rexes. However these T-Rexes are programmed to be territorial like the real ones, so they end up fighting among them instead. When one of the T-Rexes is defeated, its body falls on top of Joy's chain, trapping her. The other dinosaurs keep on fighting and accidentally push Anthony to the ground, causing him to fall on something that hurts his arm. It turns out to be his key, so he opens the padlock and immediately begins running. At that moment Joy manages to free her chain too, so she starts running as well. The dinosaur fight ends with only one T-Rex standing, and it quickly begins chasing after the players. As they get closer to the circle, time runs out and the collar makes Joy's head explode, but Anthony manages to jump and put enough of his body outside the circle to win. As people all over the country cheer for him, in the studio Laura finally takes out her weapon and makes the technicians bring Anthony out of the simulation before she announces to the camera that she's ending this torture so there will be no more games. Then she and her guard make a technician connect the host to the simulation and he appears in the desert with the T-Rex. When a technician wants to stop the dinosaur program, Laura shoots him, and panics takes over the studio. As people run away, Laura makes the other technician put the game on the transmission again, and everyone now can watch how the T-Rex devours the host in seconds. At that moment Anthony wakes up, but also security storms into the studio. A gunfight begins and soon everyone is shooting each other to the point nobody is left alive, not even Laura. Anthony is hit by a stray bullet too and he glances at Laura's body before passing out. A few days later, it's revealed Anthony is fine and back home with his family. However on TV they're saying that the show must go on, so the Jurassic games are coming back soon with a new host and this time, the dinosaurs will be armed with advanced weaponry. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.